I am Teacher Love and welcome to English Den, where learning is fun! Our lesson for today is about information gathering through noting for specific details. So come on, let's go! Information gathering through noting for specific details. One of your major responsibilities is to gather information related to the subjects that you are studying. You read your textbooks, watch informative medias, and even listen to news reports in order to fully understand not only your academic topics but as well as what's happening around you. Information gathering is the act of getting varied kinds of information or a particular reason or purpose. The type of information you are trying to obtain as well as the people or other resources providing the information will determine which techniques you should use. And we have the common methods in gathering information. One is reading, two, through interviews, three, through questioning, four, through questionnaires, fifth, through observation, and six is through studying of existing reports. Let's have this activity for noting for specific details. You have to gather information by reading the news report below and then answer the questions that follow on a separate paper. This is our news report. It is entitled, Right Instincts. Other cases to be reviewed by the new committee will be the death sentence of the rapists whose victims have forgiven him. This study was apparently prompted by the recent execution of Eduardo Albayani, who was convicted of raping his own daughters. On the eve of his execution, his victims announced that they had already forgiven him and pleaded his life be spared. They had suffered enough and they didn't want their father's death to weigh on their conscience, they said. The study will obviously be too late to save Agbayani. While Mr. Estrada wanted to give him reprieve, the order to stop the execution could not be relayed on time because the phone in the execution chamber wasn't working. But such cases certainly merit some serious thought for reasons brought out dramatically by the appeal of the Agbayani sisters. The sisters were saying, in effect, that after the trauma of the rape, they don't want to be victimized a second time by being harmed by the guilt feelings about their father's death. This raises the questions of whether it is fair for the state to impose its own brand of justice. If it is insists on carrying out the extreme penalty, 
the probability is high that many victims will simply hide the crime rather than feel responsible for their abuser's death, particularly if he happens to be a brother, a father, or a grandfather. In this issue, Mr. Estrada's instincts are pointing him in the right direction. Perhaps he should trust them even more than the advice of his committee, whose members lean towards a strict application of the law rather than a more liber liberal exercise of demency. Philippine Daily Inquiry Now, let's answer these questions. What is the issue in the editorial? What prompted the new committee to conduct the review of study? Why did the Agbayani sisters plead or appeal to spare their father's life? Create a diagram about the question. According to the editorial, what will happen if the state insists in imposing death penalty on the accused despite the victim's plea to stop the execution? What is the newspaper editor's stand on the issue? Do you agree? Support your answer. Reading for details is the easiest skill to learn and the most utilized information gathering technique by students like you. It is a practice of reading information from another source. When you note details in gathering information, you often prove a point, find specific details, and even solve a problem. This skill also enables us to distinguish the significant details. Moreover, Gathering information by noting details is a great help not only for academic purposes but also when you need urgent information in relation to everyday life requirements. The methods that you can use to effectively note details for information are Cordial Method, Outlining Method, and Mind Mapping. Let's discuss these three methods. The first one is the Cornell method. The Cornell method is used by dividing the paper into columns. The first column is used to enter key or keywords, while the second is the notes column for recording ideas and facts. Let's look at this example. Electrons are tiny particles that revolve around the nucleus or center of atoms. Each electron carries a very small charge of negative electricity. An electric current is a flow of electrons moving from one place to another. Electrons always flow from high negative pressure areas to areas of lower negative pressures. They do not always need to flow along the, the wire, but may jump across a gap if the pressure difference is high enough. Now, let us look at the example for the Cornell method. We can see that we have two columns. For column 1, we have main idea, and for the column 2, which is the main idea, it says that electrons are tiny particles that revolve around the nucleus or center of atoms. The second one in column one is questions that connects points. So we have here in column two the questions. What are electrons? What does each electron carry? What do you call the flow of electrons which move from one place to another? 
do electrons carry positively charged electricity? Where does the flow of electrons start? Next, in column 1, is we have the diagram. Look at the example diagram in column 2. And the last part in column 1 is the study prompt. And in column 2, it tells us each electron carries a little change of negative electricity. Electrons always flow from high negative pressure areas to areas of lower negative pressures. The second method is the outlining method. Outlining method organizes information into main topic and subtopic through numbers, Roman numerals, and letters. We can use only one form of outline, either number letter sequence or decimal sequence. Look at the example below. Second is we can write related topics in parallel construction. Look at the example below. Third, is we can see to it that each topic should have more than just one subtopic or none at all. Now, look at the example below. Fourth, is to classify your materials accurately into major and subordinate topics. Do not place a subordinate topic in the same ranking as a major topic and vice versa. Look at the example below. And the last one, do not overload your outline. Try to see the example below. The last method is the mind mapping method. Mind mapping method is the method to see the main idea and how information related to one another. This method uses diagram to represent words, ideas, tasks, or other items linked to and arranged gradually around a central keyword. Now, let us look at the example below. So we have five circles on the center of the circle is we have the enhanced community quarantine, which is the main idea. And around it, we have the key issue, monitoring, main idea, and supervising. Now, let's have this activity. After learning about the note-taking methods, read the news report below and then gather the significant information by using the outline method. Read the news report entitled COVID-19, Too Little, Too Late. Let us also practice this activity using the mind mapping. Highlight the significant ideas from Jose Rizal's The Song of the Traveler by answering the questions in the mind map. Now, as a review, let us answer the question. What is Cornell method? What is outlining method? And what is mind mapping method? I hope you've learned something from our lesson today. Always remember, learn, enjoy, have fun. Be safe, everyone. Bye-bye.